Do you ever wonder how much money you can actually spend from that nest egg you've been building up without it running out too soon? Or do you want to know what are the most reliable sources of investment income? I talk with investors every week, many of whom are getting ready to retire. They're looking for the most stable sources of investment income so that they can plan their retirement years, the retirement of their dreams. They want low risk investing options so that they can count on that annual income every year without having to rely on family because they've used up all of their net worth. Let's look at the real annual income amounts that you can expect to spend with a $1 million investment portfolio. We're gonna look at both stocks and real estate investments. This question of reliable investment income started after I spoke with an investor. We'll call her Judy. Judy is about to retire, and she wants to know what kind of income she can expect to spend every year with a $1 million portfolio. Now, this is her fun income, luckily. She has Social Security and some other investments that are covering her annual expenses, but she wants to go on a luxury cruise every year. She wants to take her grandkids to Disney, and quite honestly, as a parent of two young kids, I would welcome a grandparent to whisk my kids away for one of the more expensive bucket list vacations. So Judy asked me to model out the scenario. What are the comparison of four different investment vehicles for my $1 million portfolio and how much annual income will that give me? Now I'm looking at three different types of passive real estate investments here because that's my favorite. Passive real estate investing is not your average real estate investment. You are not a landlord here. You are not managing rental properties. It's a phenomenal way to invest our money because we get to share in the returns of investments without having having to do any of the work. It's a group investment. I'll link to a video above if you're unfamiliar with the concept. I'm also adding in stocks here since that's what most of us are familiar with. Let's start there. For stock market investors, most of us are familiar with low cost index fund or target date fund investing. Now, as you reach retirement years, you're likely going to rebalance your asset allocation to be more stable. And typically this means more bonds, less stocks. This is gonna get you more reliable returns, not necessarily really big returns, but also hopefully not really small returns either. When we look at the average annual return from these target date funds during the retirement years, we can see that it varies drastically. So we're gonna go with a conservative 5% return. Now, hopefully you are getting the average seven to 9% annual return that the stock market has shown over the past decades adjusted for inflation while you were building up that wealth, but now you wanna keep that wealth. So we're gonna lower that to a 5%. So if you were then to pull 5% out, and we're doing this on purpose, you could choose to pull 4% out, which is sort of the retire early percentage amount. But we wanna use our wealth now. We're not looking to continue to have millions and millions of dollars when we die. We wanna actually use more of that and have a better life now. So we're gonna say we're gonna pull out 5% of that. Now, if we pull out 5% of our $1 million portfolio, that's gonna give us an average annual income of $50,000. Now, I know what you're thinking, aren't I gonna just deplete my portfolio in stocks then? Well, I've run the numbers and that's not actually gonna happen until you're about 111 years old with this. But of course, what is the risk here? The risk is that you have several really lower years and you do have to adjust that amount lower. So that's a case where you might have lower average annual income if you invest in stocks stocks. You might have to go down to that 4% or even 3%, which is more like $30,000 a year or $40,000 a year. Okay, now we're jumping into real estate. It's worth noting here that a big part of a conservative investment strategy is diversification. So you might actually choose to put half of your $1 million portfolio in one of these sources and the other half in another one. But for the sake of easy comparison, we're gonna put that $1 million into four different investment vehicles. So first we're gonna look at investing that money into a multifamily apartment fund. These are really the most common in passive real estate investing. But specifically, we're gonna look to class A investment. This class was set up specifically for people who are 100% focused on cash on cash returns. They don't care about the long-term wealth building potential that this investment class is known for. They don't care about what their money is gonna do for them in five, 10, 15 years. They want reliable income now. So class A investors get paid their return before anyone else in the deal. And it's usually around nine to 10% per year, at least in our deals. 
Now, they, again, they don't get to share in any of the upside potential at the end of the deal. We'll look at actually a scenario where retirees, people who want reliable income, can actually share in that upside potential with lower risk on decreasing their annual income amounts. But this Class A does not get any of that. So if I were to invest a million dollars into a Class A multifamily apartment building investment or any type of Class A slot, a passive real estate investment, I can expect to get $90,000 of annual income. So when might this decrease? When is this not a reliable $90,000? Now, if this investment encountered some major challenges, the property itself, a really good example is the pandemic. We paused all distributions for one quarter just to see what would happen. But as soon as distributions are re-kicked up again, you get that full 9% that you were owed for that last quarter. So there is a chance that this might go lower to seven or 8% or 0%, but keep in mind that as soon as there's cash flow in this property, you're gonna start getting paid your full amount because it's been accruing over time, that 9% annually as immediately as possible. Okay, we're gonna look at investment vehicle number three. This is preferred equity investing. Now, preferred equity investing is a little bit more like investing like a banker. Now, I go into much greater detail about how this type of investment vehicle works in a video that I'll link to above here. But what you can know is that this investment is based on an overall fixed interest rate, very similar to the interest rate you would get on a loan. This interest rate is set in stone at the beginning of the investment period, and it's broken into two different groups. The first group, we'll call it 6.7%, based on an overall interest rate of 12.7%, 75%. That first amount is what you can expect to get every month or every quarter annualized. So in the case of investing $1 million into preferred equity, you can expect to get $67,500 annual income. Again, this is based on a fixed interest rate. And if preferred equity investors don't get paid, it's like not paying the mortgage on your home. It's a really big deal. So this investment is really low risk because the owners have to pay this preferred equity investments. A big bonus of this, however, is that other portion of the interest rate. And that is going to accrue over time and be paid to you at the back end of the deal. This is like sharing in the upside, except that you know exactly how much this is going to be, no matter what the market is doing. We'll call this another 6%. So in year one, you're getting 67,500, year two, year three, year four. In year five, that could equal another $300,000. In addition to your $67,500 in annual income you're gonna be getting from the beginning portion of that interest rate. Again, if you were to ask yourself how reliable is this, it's one of the lowest risk, most reliable sources of income from real estate. So when might you not get paid that annual return? Well, not paying preferred equity investors is like not paying your mortgage. It's pretty serious and these investors get paid first always. For the final retirement investment income source we'll look at, we're gonna to look to an asset class that traditionally pays higher annual returns throughout the life of the investment, which we'll call five years, than other types like that multifamily investment vehicle that I spoke of earlier. And this is investing in business class hotels. Now, I know what you're thinking, what? Hotel investing, isn't that super risky? Business class hotels are actually fairly consistent, depending on the location. Location, location, location. This is real estate after all. They aren't at the whim of travel trends or seasons, and they tend to rely on a steady source of guests, like from Air Force bases or major metro areas. Even during the pandemic, these hotels kept performing as many essential workers like construction workers continually needed to pay for lodging. Okay, so if you were to invest that $1 million investment portfolio into a hotel fund, you could expect to get an average of 9% annual average return right from year one. I use this number based on real returns that we've distributed to our investors in the past few years from our hotel assets. This means that you can expect to have $90,000 of annual income. That's the same as our Class A investors. Great, except here's where the fun part comes in. Because you get to share in the upside, the sale proceeds in year five, unlike that Class A investor. You also potentially get to see a higher upside than our preferred equity 
equity investor that we just talked about because their rate of return is set in stone. This means that this type of investment vehicle actually has more potential for growth on the backside. For instance, in year five, you'd get your $90,000 of annual income, plus you could get an additional $450,000 just in sharing in the sale proceeds of this deal. You could take your grandkids and their parents on a luxury vacation to Disney. You could even spring four babysitters while you're in Disney and send those parents out on a date night. Just a few ideas. All right, let's look at those four scenarios next to each other over those five years. You're pulling about $50,000 from stocks in year five. Class A investments doesn't change either at $90,000 over those five years. But with preferred equity, it starts to get interesting because you get the bonus of an additional $300,000 plus your annual $67,500 amount. And with hotels, you get your $90,000 annual plus another $450,000 of upside return. When we look at that in our chart, we can see that year five could be fairly extraordinary for you. But knowing you have these investment options for reliable income isn't going to help you book that luxury cruise. In fact, you may never be able to go on that dream vacation if you don't know how it works to invest passively in real estate. That's why we go over the basics of how anyone can invest this way in this next video here. So watch that if you want these more reliable sources of investment income to support you into retirement.